Now that we know all the basics of dealing with files, we can write a more significant example. And in order to do this, I want to pull in uh, an interesting data set. And that data set is one that includes the names of uh, babies born in the United States. So you can find this at the Social Security Administration. And I'm going to pull in the state-specific data. So I'll download that. And it will download this file called uh, names by state dot zip and we'll go we'll uh, copy it over and we'll unzip it while that's downloading what I want to do is I want to write a program where on the command line I can tell it what file to input and then I can give it a name and what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to go through and read the whole input file and then output only the names that you know for for the one that we specified so uh, so for example, if I wanted to know how many you know, marks had been born in the state of Texas, what this would do is it would give me the ability to condense down to a smaller file instead of using the larger one. And this will allow us to demonstrate reading in a file, uh, going through it, and writing out a file, as well as command line arguments. So now that we have that file, the names by state, we can move that from my downloads into here, well, into the current directory, and unzip that file. I now have a whole bunch of different files, one for every state in my directory here. And so let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> we'll call it thin names dot Scala, because that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to thin down the names from having all the names to just a few. I'm going to do this with a source. So we'll import that. I'm going to have to write things. So we'll bring in the print writer. I actually, the way I'm going to write this, don't need any standard input, so I'm not going to bring in the stdin import. And what I want to do here, as I said, I want to have the user specify on the command line what file they want to read, as well as what name it is that they want to pull out. In order to do that, we use args in a script. And args is basically an array of the arguments that were passed in. So to make this a happy script, we're going to start off and say if args.length is less than two, so if they didn't give us at least two arguments, we'll print out something that makes sense for what we're doing. Print line usage requires two arguments, a file name and a name to thin two. Okay. Else, if we actually have two arguments, first we want to create a source that's going to read from that file. So val source equals source dot from file, and what we pass in here is args sub zero. So the first argument that was specified on the command line. Since we've opened a file, let's make sure that we close it. Okay. Now, I don't want to deal with this on a character by character basis. I want to deal with it on a whole line. Let's actually go look at that one of these files to see what the format is. So it has the state, the gender, the year, the name, and how many people were born in that year with that name. So I want to deal with this in whole lines. So I'm going to get the lines out of here and that will be source.getLines. So how do we find the ones that match? Okay, well, we could, what we need to do is we need to break this down by the commas and then check to see if that matches the uh, arg sub one, the second command line argument. I could put something long right here 
where I say matches equals lines dot filter and then you know type in line rocket some reasonably long expression. I guess it's not that long. It would be line dot split on commas, which gives me back an array. The state is sub zero, sub one, sub two. The name is sub three. So I could pull off the third element of that and check if it is equal to arg sub one. In that case, I want to keep it. Now I want to take those names and, and actually not just the names, but the whole lines, which is what we have here. And I want to write that out to a different file. So let's make a new print writer. And what I'm going to name this file is whatever the name was plus dot txt. Okay, so arg sub one txt so if I use mark as the name it'll be mark.txt fairly simple to to keep straight once again I just opened a file so I want to remember to close it I'll go ahead and do that before I forget now all I need to do is run through all the matches and print them all out matches dot for each each one is a line pw dot print line of line. Okay. We save that. So if I wanted to run this on it was thin names, I want well so first let's check our error message. If I run it and I don't specify any arguments, it says that we have to specify these two things. Okay. So I'm going to run it on Texas and I'm going to look for the name mark. That runs. Let's see if there's a file there. Here indeed we go. So starting with 1956, apparently mark was not a very common name prior to the uh, late 60s, early 70s, at least in the state of Texas. And there you go. So our program did what it was supposed to, we used a file, we got the lines, we selected the lines that we wanted using filter. Note that in this case, I never even went to an array or a list because I was only actually going to run through things once to print them out. Yeah. We created a print writer with the name that we wanted to use for output, and then we made sure to close everything off. And that was our program. That's fairly nice, functional, demonstrates the things that we've talked about, and you know, it's rather succinct. So this data set is actually quite rich. You could do comparisons across states. You could have people, you could have the user give you command line arguments for multiple state files or different things you wanted to, to look at. There are lots of different examples that you could uh, write up with this data set because it is large and there's a lot of stuff there that you can play with.